Next person to the stage, Ms. Sandra Leon Tortis. And ma'am, would you please state for the record the correct spelling because Ms. Williams does a marvel job with your name, so I really appreciate you sharing your name. And she's coming to speak on uh, survey, but it's not an agenda item, but Leon to this L E O N T O U D I S. That's the Greek origin. Leon to this. Leon to this. Okay. okay. You know you have five minutes and the clock will begin when she's gone. All right. So I just want to kind of go back if we can. 37 years ago, it's a long time. I was 13 and there was two radio stations 93Q, not country, it was 93Q, and 104. And every morning they had all the football players and cheerleaders from all the schools coming on. And they were always saying, we're Hastings, we're Hastings. I didn't know where what Hastings was. I was 13, I was living in Channel View. I didn't know years later that I would have two graduates from Hastings and have another one on the way. That's exciting for me. Um, I'm not coming here to be combative. I mean, I'm not going to tell the words, I was doing my math. And I'm not here to, um, but I do, I'm not trying to overstep, but I know my boundaries. And also, Nicholas's dad and I are very active in our children's education. We homeschooled during the pandemic. We had a homeschool to get our kid caught up. He's been re-enrolled. And now I'm facing having to disenroll him again. The reason is I'm very concerned about what is going on with this new survey coming out tomorrow by Panorama. Panorama has been in the hot seat lately. And it's because of uh, who's involved with it and what their agenda truly, really is. And I don't know if anyone in Italy or the board or the district, but the person who's bringing out the panorama survey has looked into who and why and what their pretext is for the results. So my question is, has anyone here on the board researched panorama survey? Okay, so that's the one that AG Merrick, Attorney General Merrick, um, it, it, Garland, and his son-in-law is the founder and the co-founder and the developer of the survey and what they promote is not good. So my question is, when these results come in, what is ALEAF's next step? Are you looking at bringing in their curriculum? Because that scares me and that scares a lot of parents. And so I'm asking that you guys really take deeper consideration in the panorama survey. I would like for it to be taken away. That we need the surveys, we need the climate surveys, but we don't need it from that group. And there's a lot of good ones out there. So I do want to give you guys um, just something real quick that happened to us here at Aileaf a few years ago. I'm going to read you two quick experts. i got to go through these quickly. I want you guys to vote one or two. Number one, Rosa Parks is known as the mother of the civil rights movement. She was arrested, fingerprinted, jailed, and fined $14 in 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, because she refused to give up her seat on a city bus to a white man. Park's courageous stance made it possible for African Americans to sit on any available seat on a bus intended for public transport. That's number one. Number two, Rosa Parks was a very strong person and a fan of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Where Rosa lived, not everyone was allowed to sit where they wanted on a city bus. One day, Rosa was so tired that she sat at the front of the bus. She was told that she had to move. That wasn't her seat. She just stayed strong and she didn't move. Many people, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., supported Rosa's dream. Now, because of her bravery, people everywhere can sit anywhere they want on a city bus. Which one would you read to your kindergarten? One or two? Number one is the one that came home with my five-year-old. He doesn't know what the mother of civil rights is. He doesn't know what fingerprinting means. He doesn't know the value of $14. He doesn't know what 1955 is. Where the heck is Alabama? He doesn't even know a street name. What is public transportation to most kids who walk to the school that they live? The problem is, is that that's the kind of education that will come through the panorama versus the number two. What I did was I copied wrote that story and I made it make sense to a five-year-old. We should be teaching our children history, but we need to be careful how we're teaching that and the words we're using. I only want my children to learn. I really want them to understand the difference of color by love, understanding equality, 
and you understand that we are the same but very different, we need to embrace that. We live in the international district. But again, with what Panorama is known for and what they have been pushing through these schools is not good. Plus, it's expensive. Dallas County paid four hundred and sixty thousand dollars for that survey. Spring Branch paid one hundred and ninety-six thousand. I would hate to think that our district, that we've been part of for 21 years, would put money out for something like that company. I do ask, please, to repeal Panorama. Don't move forward with them. You guys are asking for a vote on a bond. I have a lot of people that I'm speaking with that don't want to vote for the bond if that's the way that we're going to move forward with it. We don't want our students to learn this way. We want diversity to be taught, but we want it to be taught effectively and lovingly. 